This is Twit. Google Senior VP Sundar Pichai announced this morning on a blog post a new project called Android Wear, which he said is Android extended to wearables. Pichai said Google is working with companies that will make smartwatches based on Android that will ship this year. The watches will ship this year. The, these companies include Asus, uh, HTC, LG, Motorola, Samsung, and even Fossil. Moments after Google's announcement this morning, LG announced a smartwatch called the G-Watch, which Engadget says may ship next quarter, and Motorola announced this morning a new smartwatch called the Moto 360. With us to talk about this story is Killian Bell, who writes for Cult of Android, among other sites. Welcome, Killian. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me. Now, we knew Google was working on a smartwatch with LG and a wearables platform and all that, but uh, what did we learn in Pichai's announcement this morning? Well, we learned that this is this is how Android for the smartwatch is done properly. We've already seen some Android-powered smartwatches from the likes of Samsung, uh, and there was a small company called iMWatch that made one a while ago. Um, and this kind of highlights just how badly they ex executed that vision of uh, Android on a smartwatch. This is this is how you bring Google now to to the wrist and and how you do it properly. The prom the promo video that Google. Uh, put out today it's um it's so elegant the way all of it works for just a few simple swipes and it puts everything on your wrist precisely when you need it we all know how big google now has been on the smartphone and this just puts it right on your wrist well the the video uh, looks elegant from the sense that it's very google now centric and to the point where it makes me wonder whether that's what it is it's google now uh, and uh, not a platform where you can, where developers can build apps that run on the device. Maybe it's just a Google Now thing, and developers will simply be creating cards or something like that. But th what wasn't elegant was the the wristwatch. Uh, some of the watches that they show in the video are just gigantic. They're exactly the thing that made smartwatches fail in the past. It looks like a big blocky square thing lashed to the wrist, and it's some you know it's a form factor that's kind of you know, yesterday's yesterday's uh, failed uh, platform. Uh, what do you think about that? Well, I think I I didn't really get much of a chance to see the um, the Moto 360. Uh, I was on the the call when Motorola announced it, but I'm I'm just taking a look at some of the pictures now, yeah. and uh, I think that kind of goes goes against that a bit. That's a it's a really really nice looking device, and when you compare it to something like the Galaxy Gear. It's uh, it's quite the opposite. You're absolutely right about that. Now, now, just for those who are listening rather than watching, uh, Google's video uh, that accompanied Sundar Pichai's blog post showed a variety of watches. Some of them were, as I described, big, blocky, square things that look very unnatural on the wrist. And others were, as Killian described, especially the Moto 360 watch, which is round. It looks, when it's not running the sort of Google uh, software interface, uh, can look exactly like a traditional, elegant. I mean, it's a very beautiful watch, and again, it's round. It kind of sticks up above the wrist a bit, but it, mm -hmm. but it is round and pleasant. I would certainly wear it. Uh, so, hopefully, that's the case. And, and you know, it has a round touch screen. I, that, is a, that is fascinating to me. Yeah. <laughs> Even though it makes perfect sense because yes. watches just all, often, at least watches that aren't screens, are round. Yeah. Uh, I wonder how that. And, I, and forgive me for because I haven't really read into this too much, and I doubt there's much details or information at this point, but I wonder how that scales easily for developers to be able to write apps that scale to round versus square, because that's just something that I haven't thought of before. That's got to be kind of, a, kind of a challenge from a development standpoint. Absolutely. And Mitch, uh, have you ever seen a device with a round touchscreen before? I never have. It really strikes me as a major engineering challenge. I do see a bigger picture here, though, which is, you know, I already have a computer in my pocket. Why do I need one on my wrist? Um, that's not an original thought to me. It was an essay I read that was yeah. speculating about what Apple might be doing in wearables last week. Um, well, I can answer that for you, Mitch. Okay. Uh, at least with my own theory. My own theory is that with wearable computing, you really get it when you do it. It's kind of like the iPad. When you just, when everybody described the iPad before it shipped, everybody thought, well, who needs that? A low-powered, uh, you know, underpowered tablet 
uh, I already have a phone in my pocket. What do I need an iPad for? But once you use an iPad, you, you're like, wow, this is really cool. You know, I, I really could use this for lots of things. It was mostly the feeling that it gives you when you use it. It feels good to use. And I have the feeling that these wearables, and I certainly have the feeling when I use Google Glass sometimes, the feeling that it gives you of having information right there, it's a different relationship with information. It's a different relationship with the Internet. It's a different relationship with communicating with the people you care about or people you know in business or whatever. And so the big, the big advantage of wearables, at least in the early days, is going to be how it makes you feel. It feels really good to do that. And it changes your behavior because of how it feels. At least that's my theory. What do you think, Killian? Is, uh, are, you a, are you a booster of wearable computing? Yeah, definitely. I, th I think you, you really hit the nail on the head when you said you don't know you need it until you try it. I've been using a Galaxy Gear for the past few weeks, um, and uh, I wasn't really interested in it until Samsung sent me one to, to test. Um, and like you said, until you've got the notifications on your wrist and you can read text messages while you're having a meal in a restaurant, you don't want to be rude and pull out your phone. But when you've got it on your wrist and it's right there, it kind of it, it flips it around. You, you don't think you'll need it because you've got the smartphone, but then in some ways you think, well, why do I need to read my text messages on my smartphone anymore? They're right there on my wrist, and, and until I need to reply to them, I don't need to get my phone out of my pocket. Exactly, and the best-case scenario, I think, for all of this is for Google to handle the hard parts of this, for Google to handle the round interface uh, for anybody who wants a round interface. And remember... The smartwatches, as Sundar Pichai pointed out, is just the beginning. Their platform is for all wearables, presumably not Google Glass, but for wearables in general. Sundar Pichai recently specified a smart jacket. So not only are these devices likely to have weird-shaped screens, like round screens, but they're also likely to have no screen and use only a voice interface. And some may not have a voice interface at all. They may be mostly sensor-based or whatever. So... Hopefully, if Google does this right, if they really want to knock this out of the park, they'll handle all the hard stuff. They'll handle the integration of apps coming from the phone and then being displayed through Google Now, being interacted with through the voice interface of Google Now. And we've already seen some indication that that's the case. I think it was last year or two years ago or something like that. We saw information showing up uh, around their Android at home uh, functionality. Uh, and and uh, Killian, you write for Cult of Android. I also write for Cult, Cult of Android, uh, and I wrote a, a piece for for that blog about this, where they actually showed um, home automation details that were associated with uh, Google Now cards. So th there's there apparently Google Now is going to be the big interface for I w I would guess Google's whole Internet of Things, which includes you know home automation. It includes wearable computing. It includes the sensors that both of those uh, areas of technology will use. So, again, Google is not beyond screwing this up, though. They very well could um, come out with a platform, an SDK, and all the rest that is difficult to write for, that's off-putting. And so we'll see how that goes. But they certainly have a huge challenge. Now, uh, Killian, this... Um, you know, we mentioned the Google Now centric aspect of this, and certainly the video, the promotional video, was very Google Now centric. Do you have any indication whether that's it for for uh, app developers? They have to write the app for the phone, and then the information pops up in Google Now. Or is there any indication that there's actually going to be the ability to write apps that are downloaded to the device and running on the device? I do. I. <laughs> That's going to be the interesting bit for me because Google said that it's going to be pushing out an SDK this week for Android Wear, but there's there doesn't appear to be um, an an app drawer like you have on an Android right. smartwatch, uh, an Android smartphone. Sorry, there's there's nowhere to store apps. It all looks like it's very much integrated into Google now. So it'll be interesting to see when that when those first third party services come along. It'll be interesting to see how they run on Android Wear. It's also interesting, uh, Mitch, that uh, Sundar Pichai said that um, that this um, will enable multi-screen interface so that the smartwatches, for example, and probably other wearable devices will be used for controlling a phone and presumably also televisions and stuff like that. So that sounds pretty cool to me. I'd love to be able to control my TV with a watch. I'd love to be able to start playing music with a watch that plays over there, either on the phone or on, 
on a PC or on a TV or something like Control that. Control your Chromecast for me watch. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't that be I'd cool? use that every day. <laughs> so is, is that a compelling uh, interface, uh, Mitch? What do, you think, what do you think about the future of this multi-screen uh, vision that Pichai hinted at here? It, it seems candidly to be even less compelling than the text message interface because if I'm listening to music or watching TV, I'm probably in a position where it's even more convenient for me to get out my phone or my tablet. Um, I do think wearable computing in general has a future. I just think it's going to be a tough sell with a watch. Um, I, th I think yeah. we might see a, a finger ring, a ring, do, uh, be more popular. Yeah. Just, uh, just a little thing to serve as a proximity center, sensor for authentication, and maybe it'll vibrate when you have a text message. And maybe be usable as a kind of gesture interface of some kind. Uh, yeah. That, that, that would be cool, although rings are such jewelry-oriented devices mm -hmm. that you really, you know, who's going who's gonna to buy their jewelry from Google? So are watches, though. Well, watch, yes, but, but they're, you know, uh, I don't know. It's, it's uh, watches, um, the form factor for watches is, you know, you just kind of have to make it macho-looking or you have to make it techie-looking or you have to make it somewhat elegant or business-looking. Not Rings here in different. the 21st century. You know, you, yeah. you, and, you and I are 20th century guys, and we wore watches when we were younger, and some of them looked like crap. But now today, watches, either it's either your phone or it's a really fine piece of jewelry. So I don't, I don't think there's much of a middle ground anymore. All right. Well, we'll see what the devices are that come out. Killian, what's your uh, best guess or what information do you have about when all this will be coming out? The APIs, the watches, all of that. Google said it's putting out its SDK this week, um, and Motorola. I think you said in the first quarter, the second quarter of this year is gonna is gonna uh, bring out Moto 360. But other than that, that's that's pretty much all we know about it right now. All right. Well, thank you, Killian, for coming on at very la at the very last minute. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me. All right, you can find Killian at cultofandroid.com, also cultofmac.com, and on Twitter at Killian Bell. That's K-I-L-L-I-A-N-B-E-L-L. -L -L. Thanks again.